Hello and welcome to podcast.init, the podcast about Python and the people who make it great. When you're ready to launch your next app or want to try a project you hear about on the show, you'll need somewhere to deploy it, so take a look at our friends over at Linode. With 200 gigabit private networking, scalable shared block storage, node balancers, and a 40 gigabit public network, all controlled by a brand new API, you've got everything you need to scale up. And for your tasks that need fast computation, such as training machine learning models and running your continuous integration, they just launched dedicated CPU instances. Go to pythonpodcast.com slash linode, that's L-I-N-O-D-E, today to get a $20 credit and launch a new server in under a minute. And don't forget to thank them for their continued support of this show. And you listen to this show to learn and stay up to date with the ways that Python is being used, including the latest in machine learning and data analysis. For even more opportunities to meet, listen, and learn from your peers, you don't want to miss out on this year's conference season. We have partnered with organizations such as O'Reilly Media, Dataversity, Carinium Global Intelligence, and Data Council. Upcoming events include the O'Reilly AI Conference, the Strata Data Conference, the Combined Events of the Data Architecture Summit and Graph Forum, and Data Council in Barcelona. Go to pythonpodcast.com slash conferences today to learn more about these and other events and take advantage of our partner discounts when you register. Your host as usual is Tobias Macy, and today I'm interviewing Rafael Petonia about Misago, a fully featured modern forum application that is fast, scalable, and responsive. So can you start by introducing yourself? So, hello, Tobias. Thanks for having me today. So my name is Rafał. I am Python developer from Poland. I also work at Mirumi, and for the last perhaps decade or more, I was on and off maintaining forum software, which latest is latest iteration is Misago. And do you remember how you first got introduced to Python? That was around the Django 1.3 era or such. I was PHP developer before that, but I was growing increasingly tired and unhappy with the course that PHP was taking. So basically, that was more like Java. It was increasingly becoming more like Java, and I wasn't happy with that. And I started exploring alternative options. I also had some run-ins with the race community. And next on the list was Python and Django. So this is how I started in Django, pretty much. And you mentioned that you've been working on forum software for about the past decade. I'm wondering if you can start a bit by talking about some of the different ways that that's manifested and some of the origin story of Misago and a bit about the project itself. Yes, so the origin story goes like this. Around a decade or so ago, I was building a content management system in PHP. And one of the features I had in it was internet forum inside the admin panel. So the site manager slash owners could go to it and discuss different things about the site. And I was doing this together with a few friends and we have quickly noticed that doing this forum part is far more interesting and engaging to us than anything else. So we dropped the CMS part and decided to just iterate on the forum component. So that thing first manifested as Callisto or something like that, I believe. And it was a small PHP script with a lot of little features that we have copied from leading forum software at the time. And it was quite scarily quickly growing in popularity in Polish PHP community. But it became very quickly apparent that we really don't know how to write large or scalable applications. So, so the idea was to rewrite it, and I was rewriting it, rewriting it, and somewhere, somewhere around this line, I decided to actually rewrite it in Python as a learning project for Python. And that was maybe nine years ago or even ten. And after a year or so, I had the first version of Misago app, which I believe I shared then on the, the admin zone forums or search, search community about internet forums and communities. And since then, I was on and off maintaining it pretty much myself from then on. And I'm wondering if you can talk a bit about the origin of the name, because it's definitely something that I'm not familiar with. So so the origin of the name is actually quite stupid. It was, so there was this internet multiplayer, massive multiplayer online game that I was playing about spaceships. And my spaceship in this game was called Osprey, but 
Osprey was taken for domain name, so I translated it to Japanese, and that's how I came up with Misago. <laughs> yeah, there's no that's second meaning behind that name. And so, in in the current era of internet use, forums have fallen off a bit in popularity, but they've been going through a bit of a resurgence in the form of projects such as Discourse and Flarum. I'm wondering if you can give a bit of comparison between Misago and some of the other projects that are available and maybe talk a bit about some of the cases where having a forum is still useful and provides value. Okay, so I feel that the cooperation between Misago and those two, Misago comes not that bad, actually. So the core forum package is here. So you can register users, they can discuss, and there are all those extra fluff that you can't expect. From modern discussion boards, like, I don't know, for post likes, follows, private messages, and such. So feature-wise, I will say that Misago compares nicely to those two. So obviously, the biggest difference between Misago and Discourse is that there's a company behind Discourse, right? There's Jeff Atwood and other his people from the Stack Overflow. There's also funding. They work in this full-time. And Misago, for most of time, was pretty much just me doing it on and off when I had time, when I had this scratch, this itch I had to scratch. And yeah, so so I feel that Misago perhaps lacks some polish compared to Discourse and Flarum, which obviously had much more iteration on how it looks, how it feels, how it's designed. And and I actually looking at both of those for some inspiration and ideas when I work on Misago. And then in terms of the feature set that you have built into Misago, I'm wondering how you decided what features to incorporate and how to prioritize the development of them in terms of getting to a point where the forum is useful and usable for people who are interested in running it on their own. So one of the things that surprised me when I actually did internet had some experience working on the forums behind my back, is that internal forum appears actually simpler as a core product to do than, say, content management system. A lot of people say that you should start maybe with block or something, and I have grown to say that after you do this block or static page or such, the next step should be simple internet forum, because it's very easy to implement, and it touches a lot of stuff that is useful in day-to-day -day work as application developer. So to have the simple forum software, you need to get registrations, perhaps categories or not, ability to create a thread, and ability to post real responses to this thread. So this is pretty much a core package that I have set myself with in Misago. And, but yeah, I am still running some internet forums myself. I'm currently running, besides Misago support forums, one more gaming discussion forum. So it becomes quickly apparent that other things becomes useful for such forum, like ability to upload media to it, say screenshots or photos. So the ability to like other users' content, so they have very bit of feedback without having to post the new message that will send notifications. So email notifications when you get response is also something useful to people. Perhaps less today when you have mobile devices and there are push, push notifications coming up. And there is also the site owner side of the thing. So, for example, you're owner of the internet forum. You would also like to have some convenience features, like, for example, have the user list that lets you see the route summary of your latest members. So you can see what the email address they registered from, how many posts they have posted so far, at which time they registered. A lot of features that landed in Misago are pretty much result of my experience as forum owner run and maintainer myself, and also from feedback and issues that people are posting on Misago forums. So for example, recent, I have noticed that a lot of people that are setting up Misago have this problem with something as basic as uploading the logo image. So we recently had this, I had this release that was focused on the search features. And now you can, for example, go to admin panel and upload the image that will land in the forum navbar as your logo. So this is the process pretty much. I don't have some grand vision for forum or maybe a few years long ahead the roadmap. I just look what people like, what people are using, what are the trends. I correlate them with what I have experienced in past, how I see our forums looking right now. And that's pretty much primary process for deciding which features land in and which not. 
And for somebody who's running MisaGo, is it intended to be run entirely on its own as a separate instance that you would maybe incorporate as a subdomain to another project? Or does it allow for integrating in, into a larger Django project as an app so that you can incorporate it more tightly into the overall application? Yeah, so this is quite a complex question, really. So originally, I picked Django to build MisaGo because it was pretty much only Python framework that looked like that fit the build for me because it had the solution in the box for every problem that came to my mind when I was starting to work on it. And one of the ideas was that because it's on Django, it should be easy to integrate with other Django projects. So it very quickly became apparent that when you have a lot of features that are specific to internal forum, a lot of those features are built on the user model, for example. And when you start customizing user model and the authentication flow, you very quickly burn the bridge that made it possible to use Misago as Django app that you could just put to an existing project. For example, there's a Misago authentication backend that implements not just retrieval of the user from the database, but there's also runs some of those checks so to see if your user is banned. And if they are banned, we also check if your permission set allows you to bypass the ban because, say, you're administrator. So there are a lot of little features like that coming in, and there was also an increasing number of complexity. And eventually, Misago reached this point when I gave up on the hopes of it ever working as a Django library. But so looking uh, looking back for the to the discourse, they also had a very similar problem because they are building on Rails, and one of his major subjects that was coming on the forums was. Oh, but this is Rails application, so I should be able to put it into my larger Rails project, right? And then, so one of the ideas those guys came up with was that, obviously, we are a big project, we have a lot of feature base, we have a lot of dependencies that will probably conflict with your project and such. So we'll do something code agnostic, I would say. And Misago recently went in the same direction. So we already have the REST API that you could use as one the layer for integration. And recently we added Django single single, simple single. So if you have existing site, you can just connect the Misago in that matter by running it on separate instance, say on subdomain, and there's a knob in admin panel that makes Misago delegate login features and registration to your first party site. So that is the sanest way to go about it. It also had benefits like I mentioned before. So for example, if I update some dependency, but you were dependent on previous version of the dependency, there's nothing wrong happening. And also if there is some vulnerability in Misago, then it should stay in the inside the Misago instance. So it won't leak out to your application. So with those summary, I feel that this is a good idea to go about. And much better than trying to stay with say uh, compatible to the Django project has to stay compatible with Django as possible Django application. And is there any support built in or on the roadmap for multi-tenancy in the event that somebody wants to run a single instance but use it for multiple different communities? This feature comes up once in a while. So there are usually two ideas about multi-tenancy that users bring up. So the first one is to have subject separation. So if you Looking at, again at real world example, the Blizzard has multi tenancy on this course. They are running one community for World of Warcraft, the other for Diablo, other for Overwatch, and such and such. So they are maintaining the subject tenancy separation. And other popular multi tenancy approach is to have separation of the locales. So, for example, you have one instance that is in English, another that is in German or in Polish. And some users can lock on both of those because the authentication is shared, but they are separating the content. So for you, to avoid this weird, this weird appearance when you go to the community page and you have the topic summary that just mixes Polish and Deutsch or such. So I've been thinking about this, and yeah, I made a decision that this would be quite a lot of work, and it wouldn't be that much gain for the project at this time in its life. I feel that this will be something that mostly like bigger companies or corp or enterprise users would profit. And I don't think there are any of those in the Misago at the moment or even exploring it as option for their forums. 
And can you dig a bit more into how Misago itself is actually implemented and some of the ways that the architecture has evolved since you first began working on it? So Misago started as a lot of small Django apps inside a single Django project. As I've been working on it, over a few months, I made the decision that there's too much hopping between those apps. And I decided to refactor it into one big Django application that just had, you know, you had just Misago under installer tabs. There was this models package that had all the models, all the templates, all the views, all the forms. And this quickly became unmaintainable. So the next step was to actually revert back, but don't repeat the mistakes in the separation of the applications. And during this rewrite, I have landed with some applications that I'm very happy with how they came out because they are nice, neatly designed and focused on their thing. But there are like two applications that really grown out of the proportions. Like there's Misago Threads application that is Threads, but also posting process, attachments, notifications and such. And likewise, the user's application has grown out. And I'm currently in the process of thinking how those could be refactored further to make it better in the long run. So this was one of the evolution, the evolution of how the Python code worked. But there were also two other big changes that happened during the project lifetime. So the first that such big change was that Misago has moved from being MySQL only to being PostgreSQL only. Postgres had some features that I really wanted to try. This was also around this time when there was discussion about full text search in Postgres for Django. And I was also already in the middle of some other changes in refactoring in Misago. So this is when migration from MySQL to Postgres happened. And another large change, paradigm shift that happened during work on Misago was when I was increasingly adding the JavaScript bits to the interface. At this time, Misago was set of staging static pages, you went to the URL, you got the static page, and I was increasingly added interactivity that didn't require the full page reload. This was, this was achieved by the jQuery, but I've quickly outgrown the jQuery for this project, and I started exploring different approach. And the first, the first thing I did was to try with Django REST framework and Ember.js frontend. So basically what these course guys did. But I quickly became unhappy with how Ember went. So my next try was, was to do what Flarm actually did. So I look at this. There was this very lightweight JavaScript framework. Dimitri JS, I believe. It's moved by ex-maintainer of Angular, one of ex developers for Angular JS. I was again not happy with it, but in the opposite side. It was too low level for my happiness. So around three years back or so, I've moved front-end interface to React.js, and I've been happy with this approach since. But right now, the another issue that came out with this is that the Misago is using this. It's so-called... Hmm, how was it called? It's called hybrid approach, pretty much. This is what Twitter did for some time. I don't know if they are doing this today, but basically what hybrid approach is, the user comes to the page, you render the static page, and then when JavaScript kicks in, it renders very much the same, but with interactive logic. So for example, disabled buttons become active buttons, so you can click and do something with application. But this byte project back in the new unexpected way, because a lot of people who come to Misago come with past Django experience, right? So they, they customize the templates to make the Misago look the way they want it to look. They then go to the Misago forum and they see that they change appears and as if later it disappears because React kicked in this layer they weren't familiar with and it overrides their customizations. So the next step for Misago evolution here will be obviously to drop the Django templates and move as much UI to React components as possible. And of course, because it's 2019, Misago has migration to Python 3 something behind it. I believe it migrated when there was Python 3.4 or 3.5. I was putting it away because I believe that, oh my God, this is going to change a lot. But then suddenly a guy from nowhere just came to my GitHub with pull request that made it all the altest pass on the Python 3.6 or such. And really, I was super happy when this happened. And I also realized then that minus few gotchas, the migration process from 2 to 3 was pretty smooth. Despite what I've been 
this hearing over the internet prior to that. And if you were to start the whole project over today, do you think that there are any major elements that you would do differently or any different design or technical choices that you would make? Actually, yes. I've been thinking about this a lot recently. So I feel that one thing that Flaron did very right was the decision to go focus on just the core form experience and leave everything else with solid plugin system. So this is something that Misago lacked for a long time. There's no easy plugin system where you could just add features. So this will be one of focus one of the things I would like to focus in next in next big release or such for Misago, maybe Misago 2.0 or something like that. So this is one of the things. And what else? So I will probably not implement some features in such a complex manner as I did before. It's for example there is a very powerful and extensive permission system in Misago and I liked it when I was implementing it but in long run it, it really increased the time effort it takes to implement some features to Misago because now you have like 10 or 15 features you need 10 or 15 permissions that you need to take account in when implementing this feature so now that you need to account for them you would also like to test them and you would also like to put account for them in the UI which is React.js so you have now two places to implement this I will probably also go with the approach of headless backend where there's mostly API and perhaps single view that just renders the HTML template with JavaScript sources and maybe CSS and do all the presentation layer in JavaScript framework instead of current hybrid approach. As a as general, I would like to have the smaller feature base pretty much because, yeah, so when I was working on Misago, I had a lot of time for Misago, so I could just put the crazy amount of time in, in making some, to, some extensive feature base and in the long run, this turned out to be very time consuming to maintain. So for longer run, I would like to start with something smaller perhaps and just stay to this core experience and leave everything else for the plugin authors. And in the tagline, you also mentioned that Misago is scalable and fast. I'm wondering how you have built it to allow for the speed element and along what axes it's scalable in terms of being able to increase the throughput that you're able to get for somebody who's using the forum. So nice thing about internet forum is that there are pretty much two or maybe three places where you have to optimize so the first one is the is the index page, which is displayed the list of the threads or categories. So here you have two problems to solve. You need to select only threads that user have access to in some scalable performance way, potentially from set of millions of those. And you are doing red tracking. So, so you have this feature when user knows if they already saw this post or reply or not. And this is another challenging feature that you need to optimize and the third bit on the index page that is potentially harmful to the performance internal forum is the permission system so when coming to those three misago implements every trick in the book that internet forum uses to be scalable so for example i mentioned before that permission system is quite complex so the trick to permission system is that you build the complete permission map for the user and you cache it somewhere you create the unique tag for the for this permission set that it's not very specific to the user it's specific to all the users with such group memberships or perhaps such roles so now when one user comes to the forum they perhaps have this slowdown but forum will build the permission set and it will then reuse this permission set for all the next users coming to the forum with the same roles and this does a lot of difference because when you have larger forums, you will need to reach to quite a few resources to build the complete permission sets. So for example, you will need to iterate the categories because you will likely have the per category permissions. And there are forums that do this, like say PHP BB3 did this, perhaps first, it was perhaps first or second forum that came up with this trick and it was giving it a large boost of performance. So the next three, next issue would be that you have this red tracker system. So the simplest way around the red tracker system is to limit it to a certain period of time and assume that if something is older than this period of time, it's just old. It's no longer new. Even if you never saw it, the forum will show it as old to you. So this cuts down the amount of data you need to inspect into database to find out if user saw this content or not. And there's further up further way to 
tune this approach is to select if you want to be post accurate or thread accurate. So the thread accuracy means that form will know when did you read last this thread last time. And when you go into this thread, you will see the post made past this thread date as read, no, as, net, as new, and post made after, before this date as old. So this is cheap, it's quite easy to implement, and it's quite fast in the working, but it comes with some downsides. So for example, if user edits the post that, that you already saw, the thread accuracy will still show this thread as read to you. So you potentially miss this edit. And there's this post accuracy, so you basically don't use threads to see if thread, if content is new, but instead you track this per individual posts. So this is a little more costful to implement, to work, but it's also quite performant, because we are limiting the amount of period for which we are tracking this time. And this gives us the advantage that if user edits some posts that you already saw, we'll be able to notify you that, hey, this post changed. So there's another risk. And as for Pagina, as for listing the threads, so the thread, thread list was actually a major slug in Misago for quite some time. So I developed a set of test data generators and I was generating like hundreds of thousands of forum threads for my test instance and looking how, how long it takes to display this threads list, how long it takes to go to the next page or previous page for different users with different permission sets. And I was not too happy with it, but apparently if you turn it to the cursor pagination, it just scales itself. I was actually surprised how much I gained simply by removing the Django offset pagination from the threads list and moving to the cursor based pagination. So this is another optimization that Misago does on the main page. And on the thread page, so there are probably maybe one thing that you can really do on the thread page that really matters for the forum performance, and that's pre-parsing the content of the messages. So when users post this message, you parse it at the post time, and you save it into a database both as original markup, and then also as parsed HTML, and you display this HTML. But there's a gotcha here that, yes, so when your form is compromised and people will just inject their malicious HTML into this post, you will get some very not good effect on your form. So the common addition is that in addition to storing this HTML, you also add some sort of signature or checkout that is specific to this content for this post ID. And you only display this HTML if the signature checks. So it's not super. So there is still small performance loss involved, but it's still massive gain of performance because message parsers can be considerably slow and heavy on resources. And in those and today there is another approach appearing where you just store the JSON of what user entered into editor. So basically this is called what you see is what you mean approach for editors, where editor doesn't emit HTML or raw markup, instead they emit this JSON. So you just store this JSON into the database and you format it using React component on client side pretty much. But you will still probably want to prepare it for server side rendering for maybe CO crawlers or such. So those are two things that so those are things that Misago does to be performant. And recently we also introduced the salary to the Misago. So we started offloading some extra work to the to the worker threads. Like for example, when you post a response, we are able to send the task to salary that they should email notifications away. So we don't do this on HTTP. And then in addition to the technical challenges and complexities of building a forum, there's also the people aspects and social aspects of managing the forum itself. And I'm wondering how Misago helps with that aspect of it in terms of feature sets and design elements that uh, contribute to a sustainable and healthy environment for the people who are using the forum. Yes, so... First lesson you learn when you start trying to regulate your forum using technical means is that life will find the way around it. So 
if you try to impose technical regulations, some people will just go, okay, this is how this form is set up. But a lot of people will ultimately give you a feedback that they demand or expect this to be changed or reconfigured because it currently permit prohibiting them from doing something. So you very quickly learn that a lot of this stuff is really people problem, not soft no software problem or not technological problem. This is also a try harder thing to get with the form software. Because unlike I don't know question and answer software, there is no clear win condition or what the community is really about. Because yeah, on question and answer there's this good answer or perhaps good feedback to the question. But what can be a healthy community criteria or win condition for internet forum where they are, I don't know, posting funny situations from the computer game they had experience or such. So, so most of this will be human problem and I found that it's best left, left to humans pretty much. Of course, I know that there are tries from say action, yeah. So there are tries like Reddit has this reputation system, but it's also only as good as the subreddit managers are, or what the norms that company community impose on the subreddit for themselves. So the, pretty much the best you can do is to give forum owners the moderation tools so they are able to react quickly. So perhaps report things so users can just report or flag some content as a a severe or something that should be taken care of by the forum owners and also the moderation tools that actually let you get it to thread or say hide some posts or alter, altogether delete them. Perhaps even perhaps features like I don't know tracking infractions on the user profiles and such, but this is all remedies for when situation already happened, really. It's very tricky. So get the to intercept or prevent this on with technical solutions. I know that this course has this trust levels feature for users where they are enabling some features on or things as you stay active on the community for longer periods of time. But I've noticed that a bunch of communities just disable this altogether. Because it's more annoying to their users than really helping them. Yeah, I guess people are hard. Yeah, they definitely are. And in terms of your experience of building the forum software and using it for trying to grow and maintain a healthy community, I'm curious, what are some of the aspects of community management and the necessary platform features that enable them that weren't initially obvious that you just discovered through the virtue of having to go through it? So one an obvious thing that I have run into is that you will get very useless search engine when you will fit the search engine with the user generated content. So for example, you can have technical discussion board and while a user will write Apple phone, another user will write iPhone. And for search engine, those are two different concepts. And then you will get users coming back to you or coming at each other that this was asked in different thread, but they just use this synonym that search engine didn't recognize. And they will get this feedback that the search is useless on forum and you should probably change the forum software to something better. This is one of the challenges I found. And actually in Misago, you have this feature where you can create the list of replacements. So before message goes into the search engine to be indexed, indexed or queried, you can normalize some phrases. So for example, you can replace common synonyms or such. So this is one of the mechanisms that Misago implements. And there are also some features that can terribly backfire at you. So for example, like a year ago, we have introduced the GDPR compliance features. So we allow you to delete your account if you don't feel you want to share your data with the forum anymore. And what really happens is that when some people are angry, they just burn the bridge behind them. So they just go into the panel and go, I want to delete my account now, please. And sometimes those are very valuable users or members to the community who do that simply because they had this combination of frustrating single experience on community 
paired with perhaps something frustrating, something frustrating in real life going on for them. And well, another observation I had is that people would love to gamificate different met- varied metrics, like the post count is most obvious one, and it was game boot like forever. But in past, Misago had pretty much verbatim read its upvotes and downvotes. And for a lot of internet forum communities, the result was that if somebody got downvote, they became angry, especially if you enabled the option for them to see who downvoted their post. They would just jump at each other, they argue about who was actually right, or how they were misunderstood and such. I also saw one situation when there was a secret category where people from the forum team were simply posting messages and upvoting each other messages. So they had very high public karma appear on their forum. Yeah, so, so this is what made me actually to drop the downvotes feature from the res- one of recent Misago versions and replace the remaining upvote with just post like. Yeah, it's always interesting seeing the ways that people will try to manipulate any system for their own purposes, even if those purposes might seem to be completely inconsequential. Yeah, it's like there's a popular forum game where people just count to a million or something like that, where everybody just posts the number n plus one to the previous post, and they are clocking their post count like that. And then for somebody who wants to deploy MisaGo for their own communities and use it. I'm wondering what's involved in getting it deployed and configured and some of the routine maintenance tasks that they should be aware of that they'll have to run through to keep the forum running and healthy. It's actually one of my favorite subjects. So when I originally was building MisaGo, my assumption was that because it's on Django, every Python dev will know how to deploy Django. And I was very wrong about that one. Because to deploy Django app, you will need to set up a lot of things around it, and people just didn't know about it. Or they were trying to do various things, like they deployed it, but they, they then they backed up the, all the files they had on the servers with, say, virtual and included. They would upload those files in different locations on the new server, and it would crash, and it didn't work anymore. And that was very hard for the Python developers, I've learned. And it was absolute no starter for people outside Python. So I was looking for some solution for quite some time, and eventually I decided to settle on Docker as the only way to deploy the Misago. I was contemplating other ways, but due to time constraints, I decided to just limit myself to only one right way to deploy Misago. And where we are now is we have this repo called Misago slash no, Misago command Misago dash Docker. It's complete repo with complete setup that you just git clone to your VPS. And there's step-by-step guide how to set up your VPS for this forum to run. And it takes maybe 15 minutes to get your forum up and running for production. Complete with Nginx, with HTTPS, static media serving, logging, daily backup, and clone tasks. And I'm really happy how this came out. I guess I've been receiving and I still do receive sometimes a feedback that, that Docker is no start for people. I found out that Docker is very polarizing even today for people who are deploying web apps, but it allows me to just have this repetitive, no, this reproductive deployment process. And after I've d- introduced the Misago Docker together with this guy, this guy is actually not just Misago Focus, but we show you which Docker, which image, which droplet image to pick on DigitalOcean, how to connect the domain to it, what commands to run after you access your droplet, everything, right next. And this guide goes from pretty much this digital ocean panel all the way to the Misago admin panel. It takes like 15 minutes to complete. And since we introduced this into the project, the number of Misago installations started climbing steadily. So this was a major win. And it's also something that comes up in the user feedback. Oh, they wanted Python forum, but Misago was only forum in Python that they managed to set up themselves. Or that they liked the Misago and they are happy it was so easy to set up. And as for maintenance, this repo setup implement includes a set of bash scripts that you can just run to create backups, to restore previous backups, and also single update command that you can run and it will pull latest Misago code from GitHub, update everything for you, backup it before the update, of course, pull the latest code from Git, 
and in a few minutes you will be running the latest instance of Misago. So other than having to remember that you should actually take care of updating your forum once in a while to have the latest security features and such, this is a cache setup. And in terms of people who are using it, what have you found to be some of the most interesting or unexpected ways that they have employed it for their own purposes? There are actually two things Two situations that stand out to me. So first one was that somebody took Misago, removed the registration features, the posting features, pretty much everything but the basic code to power the interface, and they turned the backend logic to just fit Misago's database. I, I don't know how they really went about it, but Misago was just used as read-only interface for some mailing list. So they were just presenting their mailing list using the Misago's web interface for those who didn't like to use the mail client. Basically, sophisticated Piper mail. And the other one that surprised me was somebody used Misago to run the SEO farm or content farm. So it was basically a fake forum with fake users. And these users were posting what I believe were they were scraping from Stack Exchange or such. They had a lot of contents. And I was happy that it ran very smoothly for this amount of content they managed to scrap. But they weren't doing it because they they felt they want to run the mirror for the Stack Exchange, obviously. So they quickly started sneaking in some CEO backlinks to some shady web pages from that page, from their Misago instance. But but happily, they decided to drop their operation some time ago. Yeah, that's one of the uh, hazards of putting software out into the world yeah. is that anybody can use it. But the, the, the benefit is that anyone can use it. But the problem is also that anybody can use it. So yeah. it's good that they at least uh, shut it down. Yeah. And you don't know what they will use it for, right? Exactly. Yeah. And what have you found to be some of the most interesting or unexpected or challenging aspects of building and maintaining a forum platform and some of the pleasant experiences that you've had as a result? So one of the things that keep coming up when you're working on internet platform is that it's super singly human focused and human dependent. There is no obvious KPIs or use cases that you can implement in a technical way or somehow regulate or, or optimize using your using technical process. Is a lot is down to the users or how they interact with each other and how they actually build their relations and your communities. But I actually like when I sometimes go to the forum and it's actually running Misago and I see those guys discussing with each other. I made this possible for them. I don't even know I exist properly. But it makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. So this is the part, most satisfying part for me, probably doing internet far platform. And yeah, so one of curiosities I li I like to observe and it comes again and again and again is that for some forum owners, the forum is a very social thing. And for some forum owners, probably those less successful, the forum is just a piece of technology that they can use and offload their problems to. So this is the kind of forum owner that will come back to you and say things like, if post has, you know, if thread has maybe 200 replies, it should be closed automatically it's because the users are posting very long discussions on forum that they are, and to, well, what's the problem actually? They are enjoying themselves. This is what you want to have with the term forum, right? To, uh, to encourage the interaction between your users. But for, yes, there are some very very inter interpretation what internet forum should do for those people and those people ultimately come back to you and they ask you for the solutions and i was i was actually very much in the later camp of trying to use the technology for solving the problem forum problems but the more i was running communities the more i was participating in communities myself the more i believe that the good forum software should be the software that that is transparent to the discussion where this where how community is how they are interacting with each others it all comes from human users pretty much how they send the norms for themselves and not how the software enforces those norms but this is also just like on subreddits there are good subreddits and there are very spammy subreddits where they are just racing the karma posting jokes and there are also subreddits that have this quality discussions so you can land with Ather one using Misago, but it's it's up to you how you will lead your community to go over there. And there's very little software can do to actually help you achieve the quality discussion instead of, say, the spammy, memetic discussion that you probably would like to avoid. Or maybe not if you're running the gaming forum. And what do you have planned for the future of the Misago project? 
Yes. So in the closest future, my plan is to plow through the backlog of small and easy victories that I was always putting aside because there was bigger fish to fry. But I'm actually currently going through those little improvements. I, I'm actually surprised because those little improvements are winning me saga the more with software users than those previous big features that I was hoping to achieve with. So for example, there are small improvements like this ability to upload custom logo image before. We are also now allow you to upload the CSS files from admin panel. So if you want to change the colors of your forum, you can now do it without having to learn how to overwrite CSS files in Django. I have a backlog of such small improvements that I'm slowly making my way through. There are probably two or three things left. So I'm actually happy because one of the results of those small wins was that for like first time in those years of history, there are contributors to the project that like come in and contribute some valuable stuff to the project. So previous release was the first release in a long time, besides this Python 3 release, where the features in release were contribution. There was, I, my, con my participation in this release was pretty much to just clean up some things, write release notes, and ship it to the users. And currently it will be the same because there will be release that adds option for you to customize the menu items from admin panel. So there's another use case that I felt that probably people would like to customize templates, but they just want to have text boxes in admin panel. Even even if your user is a Python developer, Python or Django hacker, you can't assume and you shouldn't assume that they will that fiddling and hacking around your forum will be what they actually want to do at the moment. Perhaps they just want to have the discussion platform real fast. So this is what I'm working on in the immediate future, improving the, I'm making more of the small wins for the Misago usability for site owners and perhaps, and also the, I think my, and also making small improvements to the user interface. And in the long run, I am researching move away from the Django to perhaps start it. I would like Misago to yes, I would like Misago to be the small thing as I said and I feel that probably the sanest way about it would be to just start from scratch and have this trans intermediary period where I am maintaining the current big future Misago. But in sort of 80-20% project I am also experimenting on new future version of Misago that is just full rewrite with some features ported bunch of features dropped and this full rewrite is being done using Starlit. So it's 100% async. It's also used as Ariadne, so it's GraphQL first. And because it's GraphQL, it also makes it very easy to build the user interface using modern React.js. So this will I would like to end maybe a few years from now with Misaka that is very polished and focused forum package that you can just extend to your and customize your liking using the LTA built-in customizability features or by powerful plugin system. So cut it to your to size you want. And are there any other aspects of the work that you're doing on Misago or building and managing communities through forum software that we didn't discuss yet that you'd like to cover before we close out the show? Yeah, so before we started, we me you mentioned that there's sort of renaissance for internet forum. So I also see this. So basically, people started noticing that as the reach of portals and large community sites like Facebook is growing, there's increasing a number of people who would like to come participate with community outside of the site and there's also increasing number of the companies that learn that when they build community on say facebook they don't really own this community this community belongs to facebook they are only leasing you the space so you can run there are companies like gaming companies that, that like sometimes to do things because they perhaps they're doing the adult oriented games with major content and there were already situations when some game developer plays some game trailer that was l rated or major rated and they were slashed from the social site for violating the social standards or such. And those developers usually find the safe refuge on running their own gaming discussion on their own forums. So this is actually the niche that internet forums are still thriving with. And I believe will thrive for a long time. Even if the main consumer change from 
desktop computer to to mobile devices. There will be still interest for internet forums for those mobile devices. Well, for anybody who wants to keep in touch with you and follow along with the work that you're doing, I'll have you add your preferred contact information to the show notes. And so with that, I'll move us into the picks. And this week, I'm going to choose a new album by a band Tool, who I've picked previously, called Fear Inoculum. It's been about 13 years since their last release, so it's great to see them finally putting out something new. And also, they happened to finally release their catalog on different streaming services as well so it's easier to gain access to it so definitely recommend that album for anybody who's interested in finding out what tool's been up to and so with that i'll pass it to you rafao do you have any picks this week so i have two picks for this week so first one is if you go to github slash encode this is the project or initiative that tom christie creator of Django rest framework is leading and the idea behind it is to build the 100% asynchronous ecosystem of Python libraries for writing web applications. And this is humongous task. And you have spare time and you would like to help out with it and contribute to open source, especially now when the Hacktoberfest is around the corner. And I would like to ask you to drop by and look where you can help. And my second pick is that Beside Misago, I am also a lab developer for Ariane GraphQL, and it's Python library for writing GraphQL servers using schema fields approach. So this is this approach where you're just describing the GraphQL schema using GraphQL specific language and use a little bit of Python to connect your business logic to the schema. And we have recently passed the half thousand stars, so 500 something we are at now. I'm really happy that project is growing, and I would like to invite everybody to familiarize it themselves with it if they haven't already because I feel that GraphQL is uh, the next big thing for web development as a whole while the Python async is the next big thing for Python development. So those are my picks for this week. Well, thank you very much for taking the time today to join me and discuss the work that you've been doing with MisaGo and your experience of building and running communities forums. Uh, it's definitely an interesting space and one that, as we've discussed, is starting to go through a bit of a renaissance. So I appreciate all of your efforts on that front, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me, and have a good day, too. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out our other show, The Data Engineering Podcast, at dataengineeringpodcast.com for the latest on modern data management. And visit the site at pythonpodcast.com to subscribe to the show, sign up for the mailing list, and read the show notes. And if you've learned something or tried out a project from the show, then tell us about it. Email hosts at podcastinit.com with your story. To help other people find the show, please leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends and coworkers.